Today we're here with Lacey from Flyleaf. You also know her through her amazing solo music. She has a new song out called Breathe With Me with Lindsey Sterling. There's a new record coming at some point in the future, as to be untitled as of yet. Uh, you're one of my favorite vocalists. It's so cool to talk to you, so thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Well, so uh, first of all, I want to ask you about that solo record. The songs that have been coming out. Breathe With Me is so great. Uh, you know, what kind of plans do you have for this upcoming solo record? Have you been working on it for quite some time? Well, yeah, it's been, um, I guess, five years since so we've been working on it, since the last album came out. Right. And, you know, writing music, I do, I, I write music with my husband, and um, and and it's been, you know, it for us, it's just responding to life whenever we feel like we should take time to do what we love, you know, because it's hard when you have three kids to remember there's other things outside of that. And a lot of times we'll pull them into, uh, you know, the studio when we're recording and stuff, and that's fun. And, you know, they're learning stuff about recording and instruments, but it's 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 uh, been, like I said, a really long process to stitch it all together in a cohesive way and figure out what it's going to be. Because, you know, it decides itself what it's going to be. Right. You know? But, you know, you've got the new music out there with Lindsey Sterling as well. That song is just an absolute, so catchy and everything, and it's so great. Uh, to have that out. What's the response been like to that music? You know, I haven't really paid much attention to the response. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's just because the season that I'm in, my husband and, and uh, our team has been really excited about what, what... You don't really read feedback on things. Not this season is not very... I'm not very attentive to it because my kids are very right. needy right now. Yeah. It's like I'm a 5-year-old and a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old. That's awesome. And... Um, and to be the best version of myself, I just, my brain can't, I'm not very good at multitasking right now. <laughs> so yeah. It's just like I used to be really good, but just something about this this season for me has been, I have to focus more being I, home. And honestly, I feel like that's the best way to be. <laughs> I mean, I wish I could cut 99% of social media out of my life yeah. and internet comments. And I feel like for- Do it. No, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. But, you know, so I want to talk about your songwriting approach. You've written so many massive songs that I'm such a huge fan of over your career, and you're still, I mean, you've done collabs with uh, Breaking Benjamin, uh, Skillet, uh, so many other bands. What are some of your favorite artists that you've worked with in your career? Well, to be honest, the the only people I generally work with is people that I've toured with, yeah. people that I've gotten to know through just hanging out and becoming friends with them. I think Nothing More was the first band that I was approached um, that I didn't really know very well. Um, and I got to know them through just like more researching them. And and it was really the story, um, the story behind the songs about, you know, how personal they were in the Nothing More, you know, uh, lyrics. And I think I related a lot to his, to the singer's, journey with his sister who was in recovery um for you know in and out of addiction and how that affected their family and mental health stuff and you know that's really something that i've walked through with people i love and i'm still walking through and um so i found some common ground because my i really it's really i really want to be honest when i'm singing and and if i get something and i don't and i'm just trying to sing the whatever pipe they're going for and it just doesn't work out. I'm not, I don't, I'm not really, you know, some people are musicians and they can like transpose things and do harmonies and like figure out how they fit. And it's just not me. Like right. I, I'm more of a storyteller and it has to come from a real place. Otherwise it just, just doesn't work very well. Yeah. That's the one thing about you though that comes across on stage. You know, I got to see you at uh, Wisconsin Rock Fest. You come across as, you know, 110% in the music, very passionate about it. And, you know, how did you develop your live performances over the course of your career? Because, I mean, y'all y'all were on fire at Rockfest. It was, and I'm so excited to see y'all play tonight. Well, thanks for it. Um, thanks for those that comments here. Yeah. I really don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird, um, it's a weird kind of, um, I mean, people ask me about the live show and I never really know what to say because I sort of have a weird blackout almost where after the show, I don't really remember much about the show, but I do, I, I remember an overall feeling. Right. Um, that's why I have, I have a friend that's been touring with me since I, Melanie, she's actually in an interview, but 
She's been my assistant for 20 years since we started Flyleaf. And it's weird because she, um, the things that stand out to her about the show are the same thing that stand out to me. Like, oh, did you see that one girl? Or did you see the one guy and, and how they were responding? Oh, when we did this song, did you see that one thing right. that's happening? Like, we feel the weight of um, the audience and what they're going through almost right. in a weird way. It's like, it becomes like a prayer for them. And so, what, it, when they when we talk about where it comes from, it really is before we go on, I, I, I'm thinking about the girl in the audience that was my 16 year old self that hates herself, that doesn't know if there's any point in keeping going, you know, doing all the hard things of living life through the drama. And I'm thinking about, is there gonna be a girl like me in the audience tonight that needs to know that she's, that she's important, that she's seen, that she's not a burden. And, and so the songs actually come from me hoping for them, right. you know what I mean? And so I miss a lot of the technical stuff before we're playing. Right. I don't really know a lot of the drama that goes on. I know all, all of a sudden the song stopped. I don't know where Pat is and like, oh, wait, his bass stopped. I don't, get it. No, I don't know. But then that kind of overshadows, I think, sometimes for some of the guys because they're real musicians yeah. <laughs> and they really like, but for me, I don't always see that, which is a little frustrating for them, I think. They're like, without the worst show, I'm like, it was awesome. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, it's a little annoying. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I just, I just, I was like, man, they are on fire uh, when y'all were playing there at Rockfest, and it was just so great. And, you know, one of the things that you, you've talked about so much, you know, growing up and going through very difficult times and stuff, I like to ask people who have lived throughout their entire career and you evolve as a person, what would you say as a younger, to your, your younger self as an artist, first getting into music, what would you tell yourself if you could speak to that younger version of yourself? Okay, this is what I would say. There are people who will come into your life yeah. that have good motives, that have a life that, you, that looks like one you want, and you can trust when they tell you you're wrong. <laughs> so listen basically. <laughs> is it stressful going out on stage and performing in front of massive groups of people? Um, For me, it would be. No. Uh, I think what's stressful is it's been stressful getting that you have to care about how you're presenting yourself sometimes. Like this way, Melanie, I was talking, going back to Melanie. She's like making sure that my hair is okay. I like make fun. But like I remember one time she wasn't with us and we went on the tour with the same band when she she when she was with us and the, and one of the guys that they were like you used to like like be a lot cleaner and like you know look oh a my lot goodness better. I was like well that's why I had a, somebody who cared about that to help me <laughs> and so that part of me if if I'm caring about that is very flustering you know if you start getting self conscious and like yeah. <laughs> like what I look like but if I can forget about that then and I can start being present with the people I'm interacting with then it's easy because right. and I think you know if somebody asked me this one time they were like don't you think the best version of yourself was the time when you forgot about yourself right and like yeah <laughs> but that's hard when you're on stage and you're like because I can see that in people in the industry right. where they like struggle to I mean, and I think this generation, because we're online and we, right. we you know, we have followers and we're all picture oriented people that I wouldn't wish fame on one worst enemy because it is obscures who you really are to yourself. Yeah. Is you're always, if, if, if you're not who you really are until you're alone and the eyes aren't on you, right? right. I mean, then, and when you, then how do you even know who you are if eyes are always on you? Right. I feel like it's hard to even see that. So it's, so it's a interesting, uh, balance and struggle if just trying to forget yourself yeah. and be the thing that's worked for me with social media is just don't take it serious there at go. all do not take it serious that's yeah that's just the only <laughs> but but really the ultimate advice is don't be on it <laughs> that's don't the be on it. don't be on social media <laughs> um you know i, I love that 100 yeah. percent um you know for you was flyleaf the first band i know it was originally called something different that was the first band you joined well, no. Well, I started a few bands. Okay. Um, I joined a band. The first band I was in was an accident. I, 
I was just, I played with my brother. He played ba he played guitar and I got a bass for Christmas and we had Guitar World magazine subscription. That's awesome. And we would just learn the tabs to our favorite songs in the back. We were best friends back then. And so we would just, um, that was my, me and my brother in his bedroom, learning Green Day and, and Nirvana and Pantera and whatever. That's awesome. And, and then his friend was in a band and we went to their practice one day and, and they, their singer quit. Like, like that practice that I went You're to. like, oh, the first one? And they were like, we have a gig in a month at a coffee shop. <laughs> what are we gonna do? And, and they were like, well, can you sing? They looked at me, I'm like, no, I can't <laughs> sing. They're like, well, can't you just do it anyway for, for our gig? And I'm like, I guess. And they were like, you can play bass too, because the singer played bass. So I was like, a little bit. And so I tried, it was terrible, but that's how it started. <laughs> but did you always have like a knack for singing? Did you always feel as though you're a pretty talented singer? Is that something you built upon? No. Like ego aside, did people come up to you and say like, you're a great singer? Eventually that started happening. Yeah. But my mom is a musician. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, sings. that's awesome. She plays guitar. She's always played guitar and sang my whole life. I've always had guitar in the round. And you know, when you're young and your mom does something, you just don't want to do it. You know? <laughs> I never wanted to be a musician. Right. It was kind of embarrassing when I ended up doing this because I always said I would do this. And, but I also felt like um, there was some little, there's actually funny, somebody said, you know, that if you have a gift, you know, or a talent or an, uh, a skill, you should share it right. if it helps people, whatever it is, you know? So I would, it, so I started kind of doing that, uh, like writing little songs and and it seemed to be like he helpful to people right. in some way. And so I, so I thought, well, I'll give this and eventually I'll get a real job. <laughs> I'm like, you know, but it just kept getting, uh, that's the thing. I mean, the first self-titled Flyleaf record comes out and it just goes crazy. I still listen to that album all the time. At what point did you realize like, wow, this music career is really becoming crazy for me? Um, I guess, well, we got signed by uh, a label. We were, we were going to, we actually did a, uh, um, a showcase for a label and they passed and there was another label that was in the meeting, um, an indie label, Octa Records, and they they said, wait, we wanna do another showcase. And we had gotten some money to drive to New York to do it. And our sound guy, Rich Caldwell, who's um, became our sound guy for the rest of our career. He actually um, used his own money to fly himself up there to run sound for our showcase. Wow. Which really is the secret to our success was Rich Caldwell running sound for us because he like literally knew whenever I couldn't sing, he would like, no, okay, well, this note is going to be hard. So I'm just going to pull her back and pull some air up. <laughs> like it was really, it was really amazing to have him. Um, and so it, I think that when, it's weird to say that, look, looking back, when Rich really believed in us, I think I felt like I feel I felt like something was beyond us was coming together and gonna happen no matter what. And then and then did that. Even before the band took off, like when you listen to those first recordings of, you know, like Fully Alive and I'm So Sick, like did you did you have a sense like to me, like on first listen, you're like, Oh, these are hits, you know? I mean, did you have an idea before the band started taking off? Like, yeah, we're these are really good songs. I had a sense that they were in, in meaningful, yep. uh, like fully alive. We did write that on our first tour with Trust Company. We didn't have that song originally, um, that first tour. And it was about the singer Layla Palmer's, or um, the singer's wife, Layla Palmer. It was now like crazy. She's like a YouTube, like, like inspirational person. Like That's awesome. Layla Palmer. Um, but on tour, she, I found out she was like so full of life and it seemed really dark. And I was such a depressive, like melancholy, like see all the darkness all the time. Like, and she's so full of life. And I thought she probably just doesn't, you know, 
doesn't get it, right, about life. And then when I started talking to her, she's been through so much and she had like this, it was just amazing to me that that could go together. Right. That she could have hope beyond all of her pain that she went through and, and live it and be thankful to be alive after everything she's seen. And I was just like, that just blew me away. And so I felt like writing songs about people that shift your perspective on right. life was something I, I did a lot. Like I would, I, 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 would, I would find those things and they were meaningful to me. Then I felt like it would be meaning to those, maybe to others who might be it. Right. I mean, they certainly have been. I mean, that music is connected with all of your music does is just reach so many people and had a massive impact on them. And I want to ask like about some of your inspirations growing up. What were some of the bands that you were into that you're like, I want to do hard rock music like them? Pantera. Um, that's the thing so awesome. about Pantera was that my brother liked them. They're from Arlington, Texas, and that's where we grew up. Really? So that was like cool to know Pantera. You knew where Dimebag lived and walked past his house and like. That's so cool. In, in Halloween, they had like these big claws that looked like a monster was going to pull a house on the ground on top of the roof. You know, it was like this cool thing. Um, legendary and we went to this junior high that they went to so you could look them up in the old yearbooks you know you went to the same school as them. junior high that's yeah. so awesome and so Pantera was sort of legendary a little bit but I liked pop music when I was in fifth grade and my my brother went so to like my, what artists then from pop like Mariah Carey oh that's awesome favorite, all Abdul, you know like <laughs> his FM whatever it was and um and I'd like and and then whenever my brother went to a Nirvana show at Dallas at Trees, actually, he went to that legendary one for his like 12th birthday or something. Yeah, because I was 11. And I got Nir he brought home a tape. <laughs> and I, I had the only boom box in the house. <laughs> and so he had to come to my room to listen to it. And so I started listening to that. And there was something about that that was different than anything I'd heard in music, that it was like, it wasn't just to entertain you. Right. It was an expression of something that I didn't realize you could express through music because it was a mess. And I wasn't a musician, but I was like, this is so, there's something about this. And I, I fell in love with Ravana. But then when I heard Pantera, I was like, this is so dumb. <laughs> this is not music. This is just some dude screaming. Like, why are you listening to this? And then I pick up the lyric booklet and I see there's like crazy abuse and like rage. And I'm like, oh wait, this is like, this is the only way to sing these lyrics, <laughs> this scream mom. And I was like, I want to scream some stuff too. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, the world's, you know, the world's a mess. Like there's some things and I just wanted, so then I, me and my, my brother started bonding over Pantera and, re, and I wrote one of my, my first song screaming just was my brother and I thought there is an appropriate time for that and it's a good form medium of it's you know, art right for, anyway you know what what were some of the I like to ask people because I think at the end of the day everyone gets started as a fan and I like to ask people what were some of the coolest bands that you've toured with where you're like wow I can't believe I've gotten to meet this musician or something yeah. like that throughout your career because I know you've been yeah. on some amazing tours yes well, Metallica was crazy. Why wow. that? We did just did a festival with South and Megadeth, and that was crazy. And um, Corn, the first time I went out with Corn, was crazy. And and um, it's just bizarre. you've collabed with them since then too, as well, right? Members of Corn. Yeah, well, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, he was on tour when we went out with them. Yeah. I met him later, and yeah. it was way, it was way more personal because because we got to share our stories of how god rescued us from him from a drug addiction me from suicide and we got to talk about that to kids together struggling with those things and um really over chi from the deftones when he got into a car accident because i toured with deftones when it was with with corn for family values and they all wanted to get together and raise money for him because he was running out of insurance and he'd been in a coma for so long and we also wanted to just call people to pray for him. And there were some really cool stories with Cheese Life. But that's how we got together with Brian. It was Brian and Sonny from P.O.D., which I had toured with. That was insane. Go getting I love P.O.D. So it was, like, so nervous to meet Sonny. And he just carried it. You know, he's just, like, 
he just talked the whole time for me. I was like, take pull, because I'm like, I don't know what this is. Because <laughs> like, when I first saw COD, I was, I got a concert ticket. I didn't know, I never got my own concert ticket before. So I'm like, oh, this one's like $15. It was like so far away. You know, I couldn't, but it was weird because I was at the top and the back and the row, whatever. Nobody's there. And he walks on stage and it felt weirdly enough like she hugged the whole room somehow. Yeah. Like he knew how to like reach. And it was the most profound experience. And I thought, how is that even possible? And to tour with them later was, it was the same feeling. Like he like hugs everybody somehow. He can see everybody like speaking to you. It's crazy. Like you feel like you're part of the gang. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you just got initiated in. It's crazy. That whole era for me is like, that's what I really came up in. Like P.O.D., just an amazing live band. Like he'll yeah. jump out in the crowd and get in the mosh pit during their shows. I mean, yeah. like still and just incredible. I mean, so for you, your vocals have always been so strong. And like, do you do crazy warm ups? Do you not? Some people are like, I don't do anything. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I used to, I actually did lose my voice a few times while I was touring nonstop with flying. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn to do warm ups and things like that. Um, but this, I don't tour this now. I don't tour like that anymore. So it's not as intense and it, there's a lot of time between the shows. So, Do you feel like touring is, a, I guess, especially with a family, that's ha really hard. Some people love it. Some people, they got to balance it. What's your experience? Well, it is a little handicapping to have been a touring musician for the first part of your life because we spend 10 years on tour and people tell you what to do. They tell you where to go, tell you what time everything is. You just go like there's a catering out there. So when you have to figure that out for yourself after that and, and for other people, little children, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it actually feels like when I go on tour with my family, it's so easy. It's like the easiest thing for me. My brain just clicks right into place. I know every you know the the schedule's there, the food's there, you know it just works. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not, but uh, again, I think too there's grace that's supernatural when you're doing what you're like you're called to do or what you're supposed to be doing, and if you're not, it's not there. And I can sort of t tell. I'm like maybe we should go home now, or maybe maybe it's time to do a tour. I don't know. It's like it's weird because you can kind of sense that. Right. Well, Lacey, I know you've got to get ready for a show. I want to thank you for doing this. The solo album will come at some point in the future. Uh, we don't have a date <laughs> just yet, but uh, what do you think? Do you have any ideas for the name of it yet? Uh, you want people to help you uh, figure the name out? What's well, your? Well, I was looking. I went one time. I was looking at the comments for some reason online <laughs> where people were arguing about about our band and about whether we were Christians or whether we were um, like hateful towards certain people or whatever, there's a big mess. And there was somebody was saying, like criticizing us about something. And then I had somebody defend us and it says, have you ever been to a Flyly show? The guy's like, it's like this weird exorcism thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, I kind of like that. I'm like, they will name the guy. The album Exorcism, or <laughs> I mean, but it didn't really fit when the song started coming out. It was much less, you know, dramatic of a, right. of a feeling, and so it was like, I don't really know. <laughs> but see, I was like, maybe we can do it in pretty writing, put butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't really know. So. Well, thank you so much for doing this. And also I've linked to all of your sites in the description. Everybody make sure you follow Lacey so you don't miss when the new music is coming out. And again, Breathe With Me is out now. We really appreciate you doing this and can't wait to see you perform. Thank you. Thank you.